So, hello and welcome to our fifth lesson in our study of functional analysis. So, in our fifth lesson, we will be verifying that the Euclidean norm is a norm, and we'll also go through some examples of norms. Okay, so note that in our previous lesson, that was lesson four, we talked about norms, the properties of vector norms, and we also showed the we proved the triangular inequality right and the reverse of it as well so in this video i'm going to give some examples of norms and verify that the euclidean norm is indeed a norm so let's come to some examples of norms all right so the first example we talk about is the absolute norm right right which is very simple so for instance when you have negative 2 the absolute norm of negative 2 is what 2 when you have 3 the absolute norm of 3 is what um 3 right so that's the absolute norm it's very simple right and we have the ingredient norm also called the l2 norm or 2 norm or square norm and that one is also given by this right so for instance when you have this vector Let's see we have and we are asked to find the L2 norm or the Euclidean norm. It will just be square root of one squared plus two squared plus three squared. It's very simple. We also have what we call the Tassi Cap norm or the Manhattan norm or the L1 norm or the one norm. And that one is given by this. Right? So that one so this is what it means. So it's the same as Magnitude of S1 plus magnitude of X2 plus dot 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 to magnitude of Sn. So when you have the same vector we had here, let's say 1, 2, 3. The one norm of it, right, would just be magnitude of 1 plus magnitude of 2 plus magnitude of 3, right? Then we also have the P norm, right, of which... Later on, we realize that the tassi cap norm and the um, Euclidean norm are examples of it. We can also have what we call the composite norm. And we can talk of the infinity norm as well. So these are some examples of what norms that we have. right? So now, let's verify the reason why we are saying that the Euclidean norm is a norm. No, that you can also be asked to verify that any of these is a norm, right? Okay. So the Euclidean norm on words Rn is denoted by what you can see here. So to verify that the Euclidean norm is a norm, we have to verify that the following properties hold. Okay. That is... the Euclidean norm is always greater than zero that's positive definiteness and it is zero if and only if the um vector x is a zero vector okay and we also have to prove absolute homogeneity and we also have to show tri triangle inequality or sub additivity right okay so now let's go to the first one the positive definiteness okay all right so you know the euclidean norm all right is given by root of s1 squared plus s2 squared towards sn squared and you can see that our x and our real numbers and when you square any real number you are going to get a positive value and when you take the sum of all positive values, you get a positive value. When you take the square root, you get what a positive value. So it means that indeed this here is greater than zero. Okay. And this here will only be equal to zero if our x1, x2, x3 to xn are all what zero. That is if the vector is zero. So this here shows the first point when you add them together then it shows the property of what semi-positive definite okay definiteness 
Then the second property is that we have to prove um, absolute homogeneity. Okay, and so you see when we multiply the vector by a scalar, we are going to have the Euclidean norm to be given by what you can see here, right? So we can expand that and we get alpha squared S1 squared plus what you can see here. So you can see that alpha squared is common. So we can factor that out and we have this. And when we bring that one out, we are going to consider the absolute value of what? The alpha, right? Because this will give us root of alpha squared times whatever we have. And you know, root of alpha squared will give us plus or minus alpha. But we are interested in the positive one, right? So that's the reason you have absolute value of what? Alpha here. And this is to hold. And where we have here is the Euclidean norm, right? So that means that this is equal to what this. So we've been able to show that absolute homogeneity what holds. So the last thing for us to do is to show triangle inequality. So to show triangle inequality, we want to show that when we have two vectors, vector S and vector Y, the Euclidean norm of vector S plus Y is less than or equal to the Euclidean norm of vector S plus the L2 norm of what vector what y okay. So to show this, we are going to let x and y be vectors in Rn. Alright. So note that this condition here holds, okay. Then the norm of s plus y, right, when you take the square of it, is equal to that of s plus 1 dot s plus what y. So the dot here is the dot product. Okay, so this here is going to give you x dot x, right, so s dot s, then plus s dot y, so you can find here, then plus y dot x, then plus y dot y. Okay, we have this here. Then it's the same as s dot x plus twice of x dot y plus y dot y. And x dot x is the same as the norm of x squared, right? Then we have plus 2x dot y plus the norm of y all squared. But from the Cauchy's search inequality, okay, x dot y is less than or equal to the norm of x times the norm of what y. So that means that we can write what we can see here. So we can see that this here is less than or equal to this plus now we are seeing this is what this right. So plus what you can see here. And you know this here is the same as having the norm of x plus the norm of y all squared. When you expand this, you are going to get this. So we can write this in this form, okay? And when we take the square root on both sides, we are going to get, no, this will go away. This will also go away. The two will go away. So we are going to have this. And we've been able to show that, yes, it obeys the word triangle inequality. All right. So we are done with the proof. But an additional thing I want to add is that note that Equality holds if the vectors are scalar multiples of each other. Right? So, for instance, if x is equal to lambda y, then we are seeing that equality what holds. Okay? So, let's prove that for you to see. So, you see, let x be equal to what? Lambda y. Right? That means that they are, the norm of x plus y will be equal to, you know, now x is what? Lambda y. So, lambda y plus y. We can factorize y out, so y out lambda plus 1. And you can bring that one out since it's a constant. So it gets lambda plus 1 times the norm of y. When we multiply through, we are going to get y times lambda um, lambda times the norm of y plus 
the norm of y and we can send the lambda in then we get the norm of lambda y plus the norm of y and lambda y is the same as what x so we get the norm of x plus the norm of y so this tells us that if the two vectors has scalar multiples of each other then it means that equality holds okay all right so that's all for lesson five we showed that we showed some examples of norms right and we verify that the Euclidean norm is indeed a a norm right so in lesson six we'll be talking about lp norms okay or the p norms right so see in lesson six